Hey everyone, this is Mark Ryan coming at you with another video. Today we're talking about two different lawsuits with two different pastors and the two different paths that uh, these pastors are taking. We're talking about John MacArthur and David Platt. So let's get into it. Now, John MacArthur, originally the church, the elders, him, they closed down the church, the gatherings and everything for, for months, for several months. But then over time, people started coming back um, and not buying like the narrative and everything. And <laughs> eventually, the state of California and the county, they started coming after John MacArthur's church. They'd file a lawsuit after lawsuit. Um, I think it was like a dozen of them, pro more than a dozen, I think. And they lost just about every single one of them. I think every single lawsuit, maybe they won one. Um, <laughs> but God, like in his sovereignty, protected them. And we're blessed to have the First Amendment here in, uh, in the United States. And that's really what made them win uh, against all these lawsuits. But you begin to see kind of the ridiculousness of it in that, oh, hey, you know, strip clubs, they can meet. Uh, nothing dangerous about that. Nothing wrong about that. But churches, much too dangerous. <laughs> and hey, people could go 100, 200 people, whatever, could go to a grocery store, but not the church. And so you, you can see the bias. You can see the depravity of the politicians' hearts like bleeding out of them uh, right there, Hey, in my opinion, right? Um, and so eventually they said, hey, we're we're having church and all these uh, guidelines and regulations and all that like we're not following them because to do that would be to to make them head of the church and lord of the church and jesus christ is the head of the church we must we must follow christ um, and submit to him and so when especially when you look at all the the different rules the ridiculous rules that california had like you had to change seat covers and don't get me started <laughs> i did a whole video on it in the past but i mean they've got a, a list of a ton of different guidelines and over time i'm sure you, you just add more and more to them right but it was neat to see in that hey california the county they're filing lawsuit after lawsuit they're losing them left and right and John MacArthur's church files a countersuit against them, and it sounds like they're going to settle for $800,000 that'll go to John MacArthur's church. Um, the, the county, the, the state, uh, some folks will have to vote on whether to, to settle with the church, um, so they'll vote on that. Who knows if they'll say yes or no, um, but to pay all the legal expenses from the church and, and violating the their rights and everything, it could be, um, if the church even said no, um, it could be a million dollars or more um, that the state, the county would owe the church for violating their their freedoms and everything, uh, which is just a really neat way to, to see God's protection, God's providence really work out in that uh, you see California's corruption, California, the state coming after the church, and God just sovereignly uh, protecting him through this whole thing. And not only that, but actually growing uh, the church over there, the faithful church, because you'll have what are they're called refugees. And you'll have people that, hey, they thought, man, I will never step foot into John MacArthur's church. You will have to close down every single church uh, in town, and that'd be the only one open. And then maybe I'd go, that's the only way. And God in his providence said, okay, deal. <laughs> and so now there's, you know, the faithful churches that people want to gather and they continue gathering and the ones that, hey, the state is Lord, will just submit and do whatever they say. Like they close down for long periods of time. Well, you have hundreds and a thousand, maybe thousands of people go to John MacArthur's church, refugees from other church churches that have closed down. Um, and so his church act actually even grows and overcomes just obstacle after obstacle, um, and you see just God's hand working there. And then beyond that, you see the path that John MacArthur took in, hey, critical race theory, keep that out of the church, going with the, the Dallas statement and kind of trying to, to form a coalition of faithful leaders who will keep the social justice nonsense out of the church. 
Um, and so you see that, you see John MacArthur saying, hey, if you're a Christian, you cannot vote for a party or, or politician who supports slaying babies in the womb. Um, very, very clear cut, very hard line, very uh, black and white stance. Uh, and so what I'm getting at is that John MacArthur cares about the purity of the church. Now I want to talk about David Platt. He takes a completely different route. Critical race theory. Like we're going to bring that into the church. It'll be great. It'll be wonderful um, is what, what he did basically. He brought it into the church himself. Um, beyond that, he comes out with a book on, on like voting. And let me translate that book for you. Hey, you can vote for abortion candidates. Hey, you can vote for sexual immorality candidates, people that support that stuff. Um, and, and so he's he's bringing that theolo or the um, political liberalism into the church, the theological liberalism into the church. The, the better word for that is unfaithfulness and infidelity. Uh, into the church there, um, unlike John MacArthur, who takes a very hard stance. No, you cannot support um, a candidate who supports uh, slaying babies in the womb. You just, you cannot do that. Um, David Platt goes a different direction, different path there. And we're going to watch a video of something going on in David Platt's church. Uh, for a while, I don't know what it's at right now, but his church attendance was down by 40 percent and you probably have people saying hey mark well hey we got something going on here right now right a lot of people aren't going to church there's this thing that a lot of germs going around all that stuff and so people just aren't going it makes sense well remember john macarthur's church it is just growing it's exploding you have refugees from all these other uh closed church just swarming to john macarthur's church well why don't you have that at david platt's church um, why don't you have that going on? To me, when I look at it, um, other churches closed down or, or doing other stuff. Hey, they should be flocking to um, a, gen a faithful church and, and that's still gathering and those different things. I mean, uh, your, your church attendance should be up, um, right? <laughs> um, John MacArthur didn't have a, a problem with it in California where they were saying, hey, you can open up strip clubs perfectly safe not dangerous at all but church no uh john MacArthur didn't have a problem with it david platt has well it's because he's brought in the critical race theory the woke stuff and hey you can uh support abortion candidates um in david platt's church no problem with it uh which hey it drives me nuts anyways now if you've been following mclean bible church they've been having a lot of drama going on you had a guy named mike i believe um, who said, man, sometimes I just struggle and I want to uh, torch white evangelicals. Well, the, the leadership of the church is like, yes, that's the guy that we want uh, for our multicultural leadership position uh, for kind of for like race relations and all that. The guy that wants to torch white evangelicals, whatever that means. Um, and and is, it seems like he's dealing with some hatred or frustration, whatever, in his heart. Uh, well, let's pick that guy to, for leadership, to be an elder in the church. Um, well, there are people that objected to that. Maybe you shouldn't pick someone who wants to torch white evangelicals. Um, maybe, maybe pick someone that doesn't want to do that was their, their argument, their concern. Um, and hey, sounds to me like a legitimate concern and everything. And yet, at the same time, we don't want to be hypercritical of people, right? People say a lot of stupid things. I can say a lot of stupid things myself. And sometimes I have to like press the brake and, and think um, and even apologize for, for things that I've said, right? But hey, Mike goes on to apologize and some people didn't like the apology, didn't think it was a good apology. I'm not going to get into that, but I do want to show this video on, hey, what is going on at a, uh, I believe it's the beginning of the church business meeting. If any person disrupts or shouts out at any point during the meeting, whoever is speaking on stage at that point will immediately back away from the microphone while our security team immediately comes to escort that person out. 
And I want to say that's kind of like a psychological thing. If you go to Starbucks and they'll have their sign that says no, what, no shirt, no shoes, no mask, no service, something like that. Um, if you go there, no mask, um, what, they'll like step away like six feet, kind of like you are um, a plague carrier and uh, <laughs> like you're a danger to everyone. It's like it's psychological, um, but that's what they're doing. Um, at this church business meeting, and I, I've never been at a church business meeting that treats their members like this. I've been at several, and <laughs> none of them have ever started like this. I that It's kind of strange. It's kind of unusual. But honestly, why is it happening? David Platt has bought, brought this division into his church, and it's now there's all this conflict going on. Let's keep going of the meeting if you are sitting near the person who has disrupted or shouted out during the meeting please feel free to move away from that area appropriately and expediently and so you have a lot of members who they're frustrated because the church isn't following the rules it seems like they're not doing stuff decently and in order um, according to the rules that people have agreed to and so they're frustrated there was a meeting where someone raised a point of order and it seemed like whoever was in charge just completely ignored it, uh, didn't address it whatsoever. Um, a lawsuit was filed. And my understanding is that the lawsuit is over. Hey, you blocked um, members of the church who should be allowed to, to vote and voice their opinion. Um, you blocked them from, from being there or being able to vote. And that's what um, my understanding of the, the lawsuit is over. Should Christians sue other Christians? No. Um, and yet, what you see, though, John MacArthur's church, you see, hey, the church and the state, like, going at it. The state wants to be Lord and head of the church. John MacArthur said, no, Christ is the head of the church. There's a countersuit. And, hey, God in his providence, it's it seems like the church is getting $800,000 or maybe more. Who knows? Um, from from the state, from the county. Um, but meanwhile, in David Platt's church, you have Christians going at it. And so the state exerting its authority, and hey, the state wants to be the head of the church. That's what we're seeing right now in America. But David Platt, Platt's church, you, you can't even think about things like that because you have Christians going at it because David Platt has brought in um, critical race theory and is not doing things as they should be done in the church, uh, in my opinion. This will help both your, um, you and our security team or our MRT team. If anyone who disrupts or shouts out during the meeting and refuses to leave with our first response team, then security and possibly law enforcement will be asked to intervene. And so this is how they're beginning their like church business meeting. Maybe they sing worship songs before, who knows? Um, but they're talking about security team. They're talking about calling the police. They're hey, if someone's disrupting, then get away from them. Like almost like the sentiment of they're dangerous or that sentiment to it. And this was a little shocking to me. I mean, first of all opening up the meeting saying, hey, you know, there's security standing by and we might have to call the police. I've never been to a, a church business meeting like that in my life. That's, I think that's ridiculous. I think that's intimidation um, towards the members who they have a different opinion. You haven't been following the guidelines that you need to be following and they're, they're frustrated with you. And you can see that you brought division in the church over refusing to do things the way they ought to be done. Um, and then beyond that, um, when uh, they posted on social media, when they bring to light what's going on, David's the elders of David Platt's church and, and him, it would seem they're saying, well, you can't bring that to light. We're going to try to keep it um, under wraps. We're going to try to kind of censor you, your social media and stuff. You got to register it. And so, uh, first of all, who doesn't have social media? Like everyone has either a blog, a Facebook, a YouTube uh, channel, Twitter. That, like that's social media. You're living under a rock if you don't have that stuff, right? 
But I just wanted to, to point out those two different paths that John MacArthur and David Platt, hey, they're on. And John MacArthur, like their church is being a light. You probably had people thinking, man, I'll never step foot into John MacArthur's church. They're, they're, they're crazy. And God laughs at that and says, hey, like, no, you will uh, step into that church. I don't care if I have to close yours down and a dozen other ones down, like you're going. Um, that's really cool. I think that's really, that's mind boggling when you think about it. Cause you have refugees from all over, from other churches closed down, going to John MacArthur's church. Um, whoa, <laughs> I love it. David Platt's church is a different story. Um, you don't have really refugees going there. You have people leaving you have attendance down 40%. Like I said, um, maybe more now. I don't know because, um, a lot of your faithful church members, they're going to be leaving David Platt's church um, and they're mature they they have they're biblically faithful they have a high view of scripture you're gonna have people in David Platt's church that say hey like slain babies in the womb no big deal you can vote for that um, for people that support that uh, LGBT stuff hey no big deal you can support candidates that support that kind of stuff um, and they'll be in the church you'll have a very diverse spectrum uh, you'll have people that support all that in the church. It won't be a very pure church because um, God hates those things. Um, but hey, maybe David Platt thinks that'll grow his church. Um, I don't know what he's thinking, to be honest. Um, but I think that you'll see that the church um, go further liberal. Um, the liberal drift will take over. Uh, the downgrade is happening in front of our eyes. So if you made it this far, uh, please give the video a like and let me know, am I being too hard on David Platt here? Some days I wake up and I'm like, Mark, you're being too hard on David Platt. Other days I wake up and uh, I think, no, you're not being hard enough on him and like Matt Chandler. Uh, but give me your thoughts in the comments and I will see you in the next video.